I think we can get started. Even if uh, a lot of people are still uh, they are still on the lunch break, uh, but uh, I really want to take advantage of all the time that we have uh, for uh, for this session. As well, we will have a kind of back to back session: the first one on animal surveillance, and then the second one on grassroots uh, innovation, on uh, grassroots innovation in the HS two. So, um, in the last during the last two years, I can say we have been uh, collaborating with the CDC on one project. It's called the One Health Project. So. When we started this type of collaboration, we start to explore a little bit more on the use of DHS2 on uh, different aspects of the One Health. So, for example, we all know all the different implementations that have been done uh, on the human health, and uh, we started as well to explore all the different uh, implementation as well on the animal health domain. So uh, uh, today we will have a presentation from different uh, from different countries uh, about the use uh, of the DHS2 on the animal health surveillance. So the first presentation will be from, uh, uh, we'll have a Tuzo uh, from uh, East Tanzania that is going to explain us a bit uh, about their experience on the on the development and implementation of a animal health surveillance system in the, in Zanzibar as well, uh, there is an ongoing project for the for the integration with the One Health platform on the mainland. Then we have uh, um, Ercole del Negro, it is the project manager of Silab from the Instituto Zooprofilattico Sperimentale della Bruzza del Molise from Italy. It is going to explain a little bit about the use and integration of Silab with uh, DHS2 in uh, in Namibia. And the last but not least, from uh, Guinea, um, we have Diablo Boubacar, that is a surveillance specialist from CDC Guinea. It is going to present about uh, the integration of uh, animal human health information in the One Health platform on, uh, on the country. So I'm inviting Tuzo to uh, come on stage to present about their experience on the animal health surveillance in Zanzibar. That I was very lucky to join during a, during a mission. So, uh, Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Um. Uh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh. As you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh. As you already heard. Uh. My name is uh Tuzangle Bet. Um. Working under his Tanzania at the Information uh, System Advisor. So. Uh. I'm here actually to. Uh, to share how we have been uh, actually advancing to uh, one health approach, uh, but also uh, taking into consideration our environment in uh, Tanzania. Uh, so here comes with the title that uh, leveraging the DHS2 uh, in the livestock sector for one health uh, advancement. Yeah, so uh, this is a piece of introduction uh, and the way I will be looking on the zoonosis as we all know that uh, we are focusing on uh, mainly on the zoonotic and that these zoonosis are infectious uh, disease that are natural, uh, naturally transmissible from uh, between human and the animal. So uh, it's around estimated that 60% uh, of non infection disease, up to 70 the new emerging, are uh, actually coming from this uh, zoonotic or uh, zoonosis animal, uh, where uh, with that it actually um, increase the uh, healthy disease burden uh, where uh, it's actually uh, need or requiring specialized monitoring and the response strategies to make sure that uh, we find the way how we can reduce that. But also it really impact uh, on economic uh, where uh, you could find more people uh, 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 gathering to the health, uh, health, uh, health facilities, uh, which then increase the health cost, uh, but also uh, resource allocation, uh, needing for the disease prioritization, like uh, uh, when you have like uh, um, many, uh, many, many people uh, affecting from this uh, zoonotic kind of uh, disease, and then you uh, attend to the facilities. So uh, we find that you might need to have this kind of equipment being purchased and things of, uh, like that. So uh, coming with this uh, One Health approach, uh, we find a way that uh, 
how can we be able to really be able to manage, but at least be able to be alerted that what is coming so that you can be able to, uh, to sometimes uh, mitigate or even uh, eliminate that kind of uh, issue, uh, dangers or that can, uh, can actually happen. So uh, the project overview actually, uh, this One Health uh, pilot uh, is a CDC funded project and they're primarily actually uh, focusing uh, on uh, uh, the existing already the existing system, the human uh, uh, surveillance uh, system, but also the uh, animal surveillance. So these are the focus that we are now actually uh, uh, working on, but uh, <clears throat> we are piloting it for the uh, Tanzania, both mainland and the, and, and the Zanzibar. So um, this is, as I said, uh, this is our scope. We know that for uh, to be able to reach for the One Health project, it might include uh, many components, uh, but now primarily we are looking for the uh, two, uh, animal and the and the and the and the human. So this is our focus right now. Uh, but uh, uh, once this uh, will be proven successful, then you can uh, in include the more components like environment and even other uh, other 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 components, such as climate and the things like that. So uh, what is the status of uh, the surveillance uh, systems uh, in Zanzibar? Uh, we started uh, specifically in Zanzibar uh, because of the nature of the Zanzibar itself, but also uh, we are working on the Tanzania mainland because as we know, uh, Zanzibar has its own Ministry of Health, but also Tanzania mainland has its own Ministry of Health. So, but with the geographical uh, kind of landscape, we started with Zanzibar, uh, taking into consideration the number of population that are there, but also uh, how is it easy to uh, to be able to consult those ministries to be able to exchange the uh, the data. So, in Zanzibar, actually, we are having the unified uh, surveillance system, uh, which is using the DHS2 platform. Uh, we got the IDCR. Uh, but also, uh, when, while we are doing the assessment, uh, we found that uh, uh, in, 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 in Zanzibar, uh, for, the, uh, for the animal, uh, there was no a system, but rather they were using the, uh, the paper tool. So uh, then uh, we found that there's a need to, uh, to have the, a comprehensive uh, surveillance system for the animal, uh, animal uh, health prior to the uh, system integration. So we started in now uh, gathering the requirement uh, since uh, they are using the paper, uh, the paper tool in collecting the data. And then we uh, gathering the requirement, we decided to come up with the uh, DHS2 platform uh, animal surveillance system. As you can see, it has been piloted and then now the data are coming in. And these are sample, uh, some of the sample dashboard that uh, uh, can be uh, obtained from the, uh, the animal uh, surveillance uh, system that we have tried to come up for the uh, means of livestock. So uh, with the given uh, uh, those systems that are available, as I said, the uh, human uh, surveillance system as well as animal surveillance system. So this is the anticipated zoonotic toolkit that we are keenly looking to, uh, to complete. Uh, having the uh, two system, but both are uh, uh, being implemented under the DHS2 platform. As you can see, we have the IDCR, which is learning on the DHS2 platform, but also uh, the one that we uh, finalized uh, customizing it for the animal surveillance system, also working on the DHS2 at platform. So what we are envisioning, and after having this kind of uh, discussion with the stakeholders, but also uh, both people from uh, uh, human as well as from those who are dealing with animal. Uh, this is what we uh, managed to come up with, uh, that uh, we'll be having this kind of uh, system uh, working, and then we'll be having this kind of uh, way of uh, uh, having the data synchronized or actually uh, being notified to one system to another. So as you can see, uh, the way how we envisioned it and uh, uh, that uh, uh, we'll be having uh, a system uh, notifying another system, for example, when there's uh, an alert or like uh, an exotic uh, disease may be happening from the animal side and then uh, would it be uh, supposed to notify the other counterpart in the uh, human, uh, human system. But also we have another desk that is residing to the 
uh, to the president office, which is called the one uh, help desk, uh, where uh, through that we also have another uh, platform uh, that will be able to uh, to share uh, the status, the aggregate data uh, from both the two uh, systems, like uh, uh, what has been actually done for the human and what has been done for uh, for the animal. So this is kind of anticipated toolkit that uh, we soon are going to come up with. The implementation is still ongoing. So uh, through that, uh, we had uh, uh, some requirement gathering specifically on how uh, we can be able to come up with uh, uh, one health uh, uh, one health module and uh, we as you can see there uh, those were one of the meeting that we had uh, where uh, it included uh, both uh, ministries to come up together and be able to share what are the data that should be shared but also including uh, the one health desk which is actually under the president office uh, that is also responsible for overseeing of what has happening uh, for both the ministries, specifically for these zoonotic, uh, zoonotic diseases. So through that meeting, we are able to come up with uh, what are the notifications that should be shared uh, from one system or from one uh, ministry to another, but as well as also coming up with the indicators that can help uh, those one help desk that uh, uh, and uh, president's office to be able to monitor of what is happening currently for the both uh, means, but even taking uh, measures of what to be done. For example, even uh, after maybe measuring the burden uh, of what is happening, can also uh, decide of what the resources that are supposed or are needed uh, to be uh, to be put for that uh, to reduce those kind of uh, uh, burden that are uh, happening for. Uh, both uh, ministries. So the lesson learned uh, through the whole process of coming uh, coming up with this uh, one project, uh, one health uh, project, uh, is time. For example, uh, this idea is actually new uh, to most of the uh, these stakeholders for both because before they used to work independently. So you find that uh, the Minister of Health is working in its own, but again, uh, the Minister of uh, uh, Livestock is working on its own. But again, you find that uh, in some of the cases, they all somehow collide. So uh, introducing this kind of idea was some, uh, how, some uh, a bit um, cumbersome to them because they were like, how is it going to work? And some were a bit uh, nervous like, uh, uh, it might not be able to, to be possible, but also uh, looking into like uh, what is the role of the uh, One Health Desk, uh, which is under the president office. What is role? What is going to do with this kind of two, uh, two ministry? But also, uh, since it was kind of uh, uh, a new project that we are trying to pitch in, uh, it was hard to, to estimate the actual time that is going to, uh, to take. So these are some of the uh, some of the lesson learned that uh, uh, through that we are able to uh, learn that uh, before we thought that it's going to be uh, a bit somehow easy because uh, since there was uh, one healthy desk that is supposed to be coordinating all of them, uh, but after reaching there we found that uh, the way how even this one healthy desk that is under the president of uh, president office that the way how it is doing. It doesn't have the connection of the both. So try to, uh, to, to, to come together and say, okay, this is the way how you can be able to share the information of what is happening. And then you are the one supposed to be supervising both of them to know how you could be able to, uh, to coordinate uh, all of them. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Tuso, for... Uh representation i mean the work that you are doing in tanzania is great and uh, i had the the luck to to uh, to see it in uh, in first person so i will now leave the floor to the second presenter er, um, is is hercole is hercole you are the last one the last one <laughs> it is uh, Hercule del Negro from uh, uh, from the uh, Instituto Zooprophylactico Experimentale della Bruce del Molise. It is going to present us and explain the experience about the integration of the CIOG that is uh, 
a laboratory management information system with uh, the DHS2 specifically for animal health surveillance. So, uh, Ercole, the floor is yours. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano. Yes, I'm Ercole del Negro. Uh, you see, I am from this IZS Teramo Instituto Zooprofilattico Sperimentale dell'Abruzzo del Molise. It's a very long name, but you can just pronounce IZS Teramo. So what we do, I will give you a background later. Um, we work in uh, Namibia since a long time. Uh, we installed uh, this LIMS C-Lab at the Central Veterinary Laboratory. And in 2020, we started a collaboration with the London University of Hygiene, Public Hygiene, to understand something about this LIMS. And our purpose was to um, understand how to improve the system and uh, how to find a solution to use all data inside the limbs, make them available for epidemiology unit in the country. So at that time, we discovered DHS2. So it was a, a supportive tool for us to understand better the data behind C-Lab for animal health uh, surveillance. And we evaluated a little bit DHS2, what uh, the purpose uh, and uh, from where, et cetera, et cetera. And never we met something about animal health. Uh, so over here now we, um, we are collaborating with the, with, the, with the Stefano to understand how to improve and how to integrate this DHS2 animal health toolkit for the one health perspective. So I think uh, uh, this is just uh, a beginning for our approach in the DHS2, but I'm sure it will be very useful for what we are doing for CLAB and for our activities around the world. IZS, it's one of the 10 public laboratory in Italy working on uh, animal health and welfare, health and environment, food safety, epidemiological surveillance, information system, animal identification, registration, and training. We are a national reference center for many diseases. You can see there listed. We are national ref ref um, service center for animal identification system in Italy. Um, Reference lab for HOA, for blue tongue, brucellosis, CBPP, West Nile disease, collaborating center for uh, different activities, FAO reference centers for veterinary epidemiology, zoonotic coronavirus, European Union reference lab for Rift Valley fever. And uh, <clears throat> since uh, Three years ago, we are also reference lab for limbs and ident animal identification system at FAO. And uh, from April, reference center for One Health at FAO. Uh, C-Lab is a laboratory information management system supported by FAO from 2012. And uh, it's now in 28 countries at the central level, central laboratory, but also in peripheral laboratories. Two years ago, we also started our journey in Asia and we hope soon to go in Africa, in uh, America as well. Um, in 2010, our institute uh, visited the, the CVL in Namibia uh, because a long term, long, long history of collaboration and then uh, we decided to support them installing a limbs, syllab limbs that was already used in Italy. And then from 2010, you saw the Easter is now uh, in many, many countries around the world. Uh, if you want to know more about syllab, I'm available, but you can find information on the website. And uh, you can also refer to FAO in case you are interested. Well, I told you about the purpose to use DHS2 and see how to improve the system on data use, data aggregation, communication, and spread information at epidemiology level. 
Through the work, we analyzed a lot of data. We mainly focuses on rabies, but then uh, we noted that uh, what we did for rabies has to have the opportunity to be applied in any other um, diseases involved in the country. So what we did uh, at that time, again, this animal uh, health uh, surveillance toolkit that the DHS2 was not ready yet. So we did everything manually to try to standardize the data export and data import from CLAB to DHS2. So we extracted all the tests made on the system on 2020 and mainly in rabies from 2018 to 2020. Then we did this uh, uh, import in the Microsoft Access to standardize and uh, select parameters for epidemiological relevance purpose, make them available for aggregate statistics. Then <clears throat> we imported this file inside DHS2. So we did everything manually to standardize this data um, import. Then DHS2 was used for visualization and provide to epidemiology unit the possibility to analyze all data there inside the system to provide descriptive statistic maps through DHS2. Let's say it was the first approach for us to develop an integrated animal health information system in Namibia. Data coming from the National Livestock Identification Traceability System, data coming from uh, CLAB laboratory, all together inside one platform. And then <clears throat> inside the H2, we analyzed all the data, all the data. And uh, at the end of um, analysis for that particular period, we, 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 we made this, uh, this uh, fast uh, vision statistic for epidemiology unit uh, to say how many animals uh, we checked that uh, we controlled for prevention, uh, how many outbreaks, and uh, uh, control the food uh, security, food safety among the country. What we want to do now, we started a few months ago to automate this data exchange among C-Lab and the HES2. We saw the toolkit for animal health that can be very useful for our purpose. We will evaluate better on the becoming months how to integrate it, it and use DHES2 in our integrated animal health information system. We are developing in Namibia, but we are also implementing in other countries. So DHES2 as a platform for data integration. And the next step will be to integrate also cohesive project for genetic inside the DHES2 and CLAB integration. We presented to epidemiology unit a lot of uh, visuals no, to understand uh, what the situation in the country. Here you can see just some example of uh, the charts and visuals we uh, produced uh, through DHES2 that, that is available now for the country. Um, maps, visuals, charts, everything uh, can now be uh, available at EPI unit and can be integrated inside our, um, our animal health information system. Um, you know how it's powerful DHS2 to, to present data. Nothing more than what we can see in this uh, slides in terms of charts, visuals, and maps. But uh, the idea is to uh, send to DHS2 all data we have in the country related to animal health and see how we can better uh, evaluate the situation in the country. Um, at the end of work, 
through the HS2, we evaluated C-Lab use in the country, missing animal health, uh, sorry, animal identification inside the diagnosis, it's something challenging. And this is what we are now trying to do uh, through the new integration. Uh, they are mainly focusing on the trade, no? So maybe at the laboratory level, they have to do more for outbreak and see more in terms of clinical history of animal to enhance the epidemiological value of data. Uh, antimicrobial resistance is something that we have to evaluate more and try to integrate in the, in the system. I know there is a perspective for DHS2 to, to, to see how to integrate this uh, animal uh, anti antimicrobial resistance um, uh, aspect inside the One Health uh, Toolkit. Um, what we want to do for, for the for a future perspective is something clear on the list you see there. Um, we want to improve data collection. In fact, we developed inside our new project uh, uh, data capture tool for consistencies on data capture, data capturing. Uh, use uh, DHS2 on the system for data visualization. And integrate with human health data as well. In Namibia, DHS2 in human, human health, it's already in place. So we have to evaluate how to integrate the two systems. Uh, automation for reports to epidemiology unit extend the system to antimicrobial resistance to do some uh, regional and interregional coordination inside the use uh, of uh, DHS2. And um, as I told you, the idea to extend the system to other countries, it's in place, but we would like to standardize the approach in Namibia, where we are piloting in the July the system and see how to extend it to the other country. Thank you very much, Stefano. Thank you very much, Ettore. I mean, this uh, is a great example of integration of a laboratory um, information system, of course, for animal health, but as well, C-Lab can be have, uh, other use like uh, human health has been used in Italy and other countries in Europe. And I would like to welcome the next presenter, um, Diallo Bubaka from Guinea that is going to present us about the One Health project that and the efforts that is currently ongoing in the in the country. So um, thank you very much. Thank you, Stefano, and good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I'm going to present to you uh, the experience in Guinea on linking DHS2 and uh, the MPSI to enhance the disease surveillance uh, in the country. I'm Jalou Bubaka from CDC uh, country office, Guinea. Uh, this will be our outline for the presentation. I will introduce the, the country uh, talking about uh, uh, the history on integrating the DHS2 and the MPSI and then addressing some challenges and uh, the next step uh, for the implementation. As you know, Guinea is a West Africa country with around 14 million population, and uh, the density of the population is around uh, 57 inhabitants for kilometer square. We have uh, around eight uh, administrative uh, regions, 38 uh, uh, prefecture or health district, and uh, around 342 uh, sub district The health system structure as a pyramidal system from the top to the community level. As you see, we have uh, three national hospitals and uh, eight regional hospitals. And at the bottom, we have uh, 581 public uh, health centers and around 100 private uh, health structure integrating the IDSR. We have the same uh, structure at the animal health with one national direction of veterinarian 
and eight regional veterinarian direction and 38 uh, prefectural uh, uh, direction. Uh, they have uh, 361 uh, post uh, uh, livestock posts where the surveillance of animal health uh, took place. The objective of this uh, uh, integration will be to improve uh, the zoonotic disease area warning for detection self system to uh, uh, respond at time uh, the epidemic, to reduce the workload for the data entry agents and to improve the data quality in the system, and then to strengthen the One Health platform in the country. Uh, the background on this uh, 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 implementation will be, you know, the history of Guinea. From 2014 to 2016, uh, Guinea faced the one biggest uh, outbreak of Ebola. And uh, at the end of that uh, outbreak, the country uh, adopt the DHS2 as a tool for the national health information uh, management. At the same time, in 2017, uh, the country created the national One Health platform to mitigate all the zoonotic uh, uh, disease around uh, the three sectors, health, uh, livestock, and uh, environment. Uh, the deployment of the DHS2 start in uh, 2004, the IDSR specifically, in 2017, by uh, a pilot phase with uh, 15 disease uh, priorities and six uh, uh, public health uh, events. And then today we are at the health center level. All the health center, all the structure are integrated. And uh, the health center is where we integrate the data for analysis at the district level and uh, validation and uh, then uh, action taken. The animal health as well, uh, the process started in 1994 uh, by deploying what we call RIMAGI. RIMAGI is a, a network of animal health surveillance. And uh, today uh, they are at uh, the uh, community level uh, where they have more than 1,300 uh, uh, community workers who capture data at uh, the community level. And uh, today uh, they already transit from the Empresai to the Empresai Plus in perspective of uh, this integration between the DHS2 and uh, the Empresai. Uh, the process for this uh, interoperability start by receiving a request from the country level, and then CDC in collaboration with uh, UIO and uh, the FAO have a proposal to create a metadata package and a toolkit for the zoonotic disease. And the proposal was to integrate the animal and the human health uh, surveillance. Uh, as a colleague from Tanzania uh, present here, Guinea was in the pilot phase with Cambodia. It's a time to thank a colleague from Tanzania for all the support and the collaboration uh, they did to support us as we are at the beginning stage now. And uh, today, uh, where we are, uh, and also before, in 2023, Guinea lead also the joining external evaluation, which recommend hardly to integrate the both system of surveillance. And today, uh, after a presentation from the technical working group uh, from the University of Oslo, FAO and CDC, to the country by showing the different method of this integration. The first option was to have a notification from one system to another one. And the second option was to have a bi-directional data sharing between the two systems. And uh, at the end of uh, that presentation, it came out to have a national consultation uh, workshop, which took place in uh, last March in the country. And uh, uh, at the end of that uh, workshop, we came out with uh, a defined roadmap for the interoperability, and we created a national technical working group to lead uh, uh, all the technical issues, and they define the option for the interoperability, which we will see the next, uh, on the next slide. Uh, these are the way, uh, the different options for the interoperability they propose to the country. At the end, the country opt for the bi-directional data sharing between the DHS2 
and uh, the Empress I uh, Plus. Uh, because as you see, the deployment of all this, uh, the system are now at uh, uh, very far at the community level. And then the country want to build really a strong system for this uh, exchange between the two systems. Uh, but uh, we do have some issues, as you know, we need to have some API to favorite that collaboration. And that will take some time. And now uh, the technical working group proposed the country uh, to start by the first option, having this notification option, and then we'll go through to the last option to have this bi-directional. These are the main partners supporting this activity. It's time to thank all of them for the quality of the support. We came up with some uh, challenges. The first is, you know, there is a mini fragmentation, uh, fragmented uh, health data management system and we have a limited collaboration between the different sectors and uh, the discrepancy between uh, the data between the different systems and the lack of uh, API in uh, the empresai system. And the biggest one is that the country requests that require to have the data hosting in the country. As you know, when a, a colleague from DRC yesterday present, uh, the empresai data are hosted in uh, Roma with uh, FAO, and then the country now want to address uh, that to have the data uh, hosted in the country. But we are working to address all these challenges. The first is to improve the quality of the coordination. The second is the discussion is ongoing to see the way for the data hosting, which will be the better option. And we are developing now the Technicians are working on developing the API for the easy integration. And this the technical working group are already starting working on addressing the different challenges for uh, the solutions. The next step uh, will be uh, to have a, 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 a to develop a manual. What will be our uh, this uh, interoperability? Uh, a colleague from Kenya speak uh, last time about the dictionary for interoperability. We want to know exactly what will be the interoperability, not just to say it to be a word. We will define the API for the empresa to enable this communication and address uh, uh, the requirement from the authority and develop a demo when we will uh, approve the last option for the scenario and train uh, the pilot phase agents and then implement the phase and go to the evaluation. In conclusion, I will say Guinea is a low income country with uh, multiple uh, data management system, but with a uh, strong uh, support from partners, uh, this interoperability between DHIS2 and Empresai will represent a significant advance for zoonotic disease surveillance, data management and epidemic prone disease capability response. The Guinea will strengthen its ability to respond to uh, this zoonotic disease uh, outbreak, then mitigate uh, the impact on economic uh, uh, impact. It's a time to, it's, we just are in our beginnings for this experience, and uh, we want to share with uh, all the colleagues experience to help uh, build a strong uh, way to this interoperability between the different uh, sectors. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, Bubakar, for uh, for driving us through the uh, through their experience of one L. As you can see, there are a lot of common points. We have seen the presentation from uh, uh, from Tuzo about the work done in East Tanzania and as well in uh, in Guinea related to the one L. But as well, the very importance uh, related the integration of laboratory information on. Uh, on the animal health surveillance aspect. Uh, I will take advantage of this session um, to introduce as well a little bit uh, uh, the toolkit that we have been produced uh, thanks to the collaboration uh, with the two pilots that were done uh, and are still on course uh, in uh, Tanzania and uh, in Guinea, but as well thanks to all the collaboration that we had with uh, the CDC Atlanta, FAO, and WOA partners. So there are some colleagues uh, of FAO online that uh, would really 
uh, would like to thank personally. I will go through very very rapidly because uh, we will have a presentation at uh, four in the same in this same auditorium about toolkits, so we can uh, dive a little bit more on the details of this. But just really want to highlight the importance about animal health surveillance and zoonosis because we have just coming out of COVID nineteen that was a zoonosis, and the next uh, pandemic, uh, everybody is saying that it will be a zoonosis again. So. Strengthening health for uh, animal health information system is key. So as I say before, this uh, uh, this uh, animal health toolkit that we have been uh, we have just published uh, last week before before the conference uh, as, as a result of this collaboration between uh, uh, between a CDC, FAO, and uh, and all the East groups and countries that have decided to be part of uh, the pilot. As you can see, um, DHS true for animal health has been used and is used in several countries, okay? So uh, yesterday there was an example of DRC, today we have seen about uh, Guinea and Tanzania, as well in Burkina Faso, has been used and still in use in Uganda, Rwanda, Indonesia. So there are several examples. These are examples that uh, we know of. We don't really have a, a clear idea because uh, all the rest of the community and the organization that are already using it for uh, animal health and surveillance system. Here, just a snapshot was really um, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Boakai explained this very well as well from uh, East Tanzania experience, how animal health can uh, be merged in a one health desktop and why this is extremely important with different level of integration it can be just uh, sharing all notification between different ministry of health and animal health uh, or uh, complete uh, interoperability between the two systems that uh, have been used. Uh, example, in uh, in Zanzibar, in which both ministries are using DHS2, so the integration is much more easier. Or example, in Guinea, in which there are different platforms that have been used, like Empresai, MAE, or as well can be other uh, other instruments. And uh, the toolkit that we've been working with, uh, with sorry, has been based uh, on the Empresai system. The Empresai system is the system that has been used for uh, by FAO, for uh, uh, early warning, uh, uh, early warning surveillance for uh, um, the animal health, and uh, so as all the other toolkits, uh, this toolkit is, is based on international standards and emphasis based uh, on the experience that we have gained on the different uh, countries. There are different aspects that are part of the of the toolkit. So uh, even ba uh, even based data collection system, even based, not even program. So is a tracker program in which the TI is a uh, event. And there are all the different maps analytics that they are supporting uh, as well for all the other implementation of DHS truth as well. There is this layer of interoperability that still we are working on as was presented for uh, Guinea with this uh, API to API integration with the Empresai. Uh, but we already in collaboration with the East West Central Africa, there is a DHS2 custom web app to be able to export data from DHS2 and importing this data in the Empresai system to be able to inform the uh, this uh, international uh, platform that is the uh, this the Empresai. Going through very rapid about uh, how the tracker has been uh, structured. Here you can see is really how we use the Empresai system to inform uh, the the models, different analytics that has been uh, uh, that have been built based uh, on the um, based on the uh, based on the experience and as well the notifications as was different. Uh, uh, we had a workshop uh, two years ago in Rome uh, with the uh, FAO to try to understand, okay, how we can uh, enhance this interoperability. So we found different solution like uh, just sharing all notification between uh, the two ministries. Sometimes there is lack of communication. So DHS2 has already embedded this uh, notification um, characteristic that can help on uh, on that side, so really just sharing a higher notification, just, okay, we have seen this number of zoonosis in this specific area, let's report to the human counterparts. And uh, as well, as was mentioned in this uh, upper reporting to the uh, to the Empresai uh, platform that is uh, hosted over by FAO. So if the HS2 has been used in the country, how we can inform uh, the, uh, the global surveillance uh, Platform. We can have example like DRC as well, in which in the countries both DHS2 and Empresai has been used as well. This integration, exchange of information, not only at international level but as well at uh, at uh, national level. So this 
is uh, one of the is the um, DHSU custom web app that we, we have been working with uh, East West Central Africa to allow this type of uh, uh, information here. Just a little bit of uh, technicalities how for this uh, for the mapping uh, the semantic mapping that has been done. So uh, I'm really sorry because it's already uh, one forty five and we have uh, the other session about the gross root, uh, uh, grassroots innovation. Just want to invite you on the on the same uh, auditorium at uh, four p.m. that we are going to present a little bit all the work that we have been done on these uh, global toolkits.